Oh my god, we actually have Xenoblade news. Dude, it feels so long. Oh, it's beautiful. So the art book is out there, and apparently within it, there was a giant Q&A with Takahashi, who if you don't know, is kind of like the, the head guy of Xenoblade. Can't imagine that's written on his business card, but you know what I mean. And some juicy questions were asked, and we got some juicy answers as well. And your boy may have been on the money. Yeah, I'm just saying, okay? This video may be a little bit of a victory lap. Just a little bit, though. So let's go- let's get in on all of this. Now, I don't have the art book, so a lot of the information I got is, like, second, possibly even third, maybe fourth hand. Essentially, I browsed Twitter. So take from that what you will, but I think I got a few of the general points down here. Uh, the Goldo from Xenoblade 2, you know, that big fight in Mortha, that wasn't Galea. Like, people thought this because of the ID card that kind of resembled Galea. Turns out it's not Galea. I never really vibed with that theory personally. I just bought it because everyone else did, but it was just like, eh, I don't like this that much. So I'm kind of glad that got deconfirmed. And really, there's three main points here for me. Uh, we got one down. The second one is a pretty big one. Lucky Seven is Fior. Yeah, so the characters from Xenoblade 1 and 2, they can be in Xenoblade 3 either as actual characters like Vex, Shulk, Melia, Nia, or as items or objects. So we had Numa's Core Crystal in the Fist of the End in Future Redeemed and in, you know, Noah's Sheath in the base game of Xenoblade 3, but Lucky 7 itself was essentially Fior, which makes the name make way more sense because Fior is the seventh party member, and so people don't get spoiled for Xenoblade 1, a popular term to call Fior, for those who aren't spoiled yet, is that the, she is the seventh party member, or seven. This one is not exactly new information, fully just more of a narrow scope than before, because in Future Redeemed, there's some optional dialogue with Riku, where he kind of heavily suggests that it's the party of Xenoblade 1 that's turned into the sword for Lucky Seven. Now we kind of have clarification that it's just Fior, and I vibe with that way more because, you know, Shulk was already there in Future Redeemed, so didn't make complete sense. Maybe it could have been like a fragment, but it's just Fior that makes way more sense. I like that. Also, though, I made a short about this. Screw Noah. Everyone I know hates hates Noah. Uh, and Clears was Xenoblade Protag, was Tentatsu, somehow. Dude, at the end of Xenoblade 3, pretty much chucked. Fior, Pyra, and Mithra into the ocean for some reason. Like, he could have just laid the sword up against the wall or whatever, or just took it with him. We don't gotta actually drown the characters of Xenoblade 1 and 2, you know? So, bit of a D move from nowhere there, but I find it kind of funny. Also addresses, like, one of my major... I wouldn't call it a major critique, just one of the things I'm like, huh, where is Fior? Because she was a massive character in Xenoblade 1, and then pretty much never referenced in Xenoblade 3, or Future Redeemed that much. You know, besides Nicole being there, but that was kind of just Shulk's show in Future Redeemed. But knowing now that Fior herself is just Lucky 7, I like that she has some kind of important, plot-significant role in Xenoblade 3. I like that. Now, the big one. The one where I basically called my shot. The one where your boy is essentially correct and on the money. Let me cook. End Sword. Whatever you want to call it. The Sword of the End, I think. I don't know. There's a lot of Sword of the End, Sword of Origin, Sword of whatever, Sword of Depression. End Sword, though, has Malos. In the way that Matthew's Fists of the End and then Noah's sword had Numa. Now, I gotta be a little bit mean here, okay? This, to me, was a basic media literacy check. Because in Future Redeemed, what they basically did was show you the Numa Core Crystal in Matthew's Fist of the End, and then camera pan over to N, whose sword was glowing purple. Or shadowy, purpley blue, whatever. Now, I can understand how far more casual playthrough. Maybe you don't pick up on that. It's entirely fine. But if that's pointed out to you, I don't know why people pushed back on that. I didn't even think that had to be a debate, but apparently it was. But then, the big one, where I called my shot. I'm almost certain I have a theory from like a year or so ago in regards to a possible Malos role in Xenoblade 4. I swear to God I made this video, I just don't remember it. Maybe I just yapped about it on stream, that's possible. But, that's not the big one. The big one is, question. Well, how did N get the Malos Core Crystal? How did he get Logos? It's a good question, right? He was defeated at the end of Xenoblade 2. And while we did hear him in Numa's head, not like that, when Numa was trying to sacrifice herself, and he basically asked, so what was it like being alive? So how was it? We didn't exactly know what happened to the core crystal itself. 
So there's a giant question mark from the end of Xenoblade 2 to Xenoblade 3's Ionios somehow end getting the Malice Core Crystal. Could it be a case of how, say, Antos, Antos's Core Crystal washed up on the beach and then someone found it? Possibly, but we don't have that answer yet. And to my understanding, Takahashi basically said, again, this isn't a direct quote or direct translation because, again, like, I'm going through hoops and hoops to find this information just by browsing Twitter by a whole bunch of people that want to be vague as hell for some reason. I digress. I digress. He can't reveal how and got Mal Malos' core crystal yet. Yet being a big one, because yet implies that we're going to get that answer at some point in the future. Almost as if your boy was right the entire freaking time when I called my shot when I first beat Xenoblade 3 that this is def definitely getting continuation in the future in some shape or form. And that if the DLC wasn't the continuation, then the continuation would be in Xenoblade 4. I called my shot. I called this thing. I didn't call net. I called game, but I also got net. And also the point that we've had interviews with Takahashi before and other people from Monolith and Nintendo that basically said that Xenoblade is continuing. Like, I've covered those extensively before. And I'll leave a link to this one in the description down below because it's air though. And I don't know how reliable the quote is, but I'll just give the quote, just take it with a grain of salt. Uh, this, is, this should be from Takahashi. For example, I understand that there are many requests to see what happens after the ending. However, if we were to do that, we would have to make brackets what lies end bracket further beyond from Xenoblade 3. So, oh, I understand the sentiment, but please hold for a bit. If you can look forward to it and wait, that would be appreciated. But honestly, I'm just having a ton of fun with this. I'm back in my element. We got Xenoblade stuff. We got Xenoblade lore, theory crafting. I'm back in my element. I'm feeling good. Yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling energized. And I'll just read the entire second bullet point. Again, link in the description down below to Eros tweet that, ha that has this. Takahashi's final comment to wrap the interview up. Xenoblade was released in 2010, and some of our customers have been with us throughout those 14 years. I joined in about 2015, 2016 with X continuing to follow us, and that makes me deeply emotional. The only thing I have to say to that is thank you. We would like to continue to meet the expectations of those who have supported us in that way. With up to Xenoblade 3 finished, up to. I'm sure there's plenty of customers who feel that this isn't enough. Hi, Takahashi. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the channel, by the way. They want to know this or that, and that this book isn't enough to cover that. To cover that being in brackets. But we have heard those voices from our customers loud and clear. Oh, trust me, this is the Xenoblade fandom. I'm sure it's been loud and clear. Gradually, I suppose, or in the future. Get it, because the final song's called Future Awaits. During the creation process, we would like to respond to those voices. So please look forward to that dot dot dot. That would be it, yes, period. Pieces are coming together, people. We may not be proven correctly in full, yet... But the pieces are falling into place. The final line of dialogue in Xenoblade 3, in the post credit scene, in that save screen with Mio, you have the ending of Xenoblade 3 and the ending of Future Redeemed, with most likely Cosmos coming down to the planet and the planet possibly being interlinked. Him talking about Malos coming back or being explained in some way in the future, not that he's coming back. Let me just be clear here, just that the way that N got Malice's core crystal will probably be explained in the future. The pieces are falling into place, people. Can you feel it? That electricity in the air coursing through your veins, coursing through your veins. I'm on the cusp to have nailed this, to have predicted this. Helps having 10 theories, to have predicted this. Years in advance, I'm calling my shot, chat. I am calling my shot. And this will either age immaculately, like my predictions for the ending of Final Fantasy XIV and Walker months before that came out, or we're gonna crash and burn like the Hindenburg. It's gonna be like one of the two and there's no in between. But hey, I wouldn't call myself a gambling man. But if I were though, I'd be all in. Uh, I will say though, I don't know if Xenoblade 4 would be the next game that's gonna come out. I still think they're gonna go back to X in some capacity, whether that's for the Switch reveal, Switch 2 release window for a possible Xenoblade X re remaster or definitive edition, or they wanna do Xenoblade X2. I still kind of think you would have to bring X to like modern consoles so that more than 12 people can play the game. But I kind of think they're going to go in that direction first. I don't believe Xeno Saga or Xeno Gears coming back would interrupt Xenoblade 4. I don't think so. I imagine that would be a different team. Because remember, 
Remember the pattern, yeah? Patterns will set you free. Once you have them established, you go into them, you lean into them. And there's a pattern to Xenoblade release schedules. Between each numbered game, there's two other things. In between Xenoblade 1 and 2, we had Xenoblade 1 on the 3DS, and we had Xenoblade X. In between 2 and 3, we had Torn the Golden Country, and we had Xenoblade 1 Definitive Edition. Now, we have 3 to 4. And so far, we've had one thing. Future, future redeem. We are still due for one other thing before Xenoblade 4. And, uh, you know, judging from history, it could be a Xenoblade 1 thing, but I can't imagine that'd be the case. It'd be kind of funny if they just did, like, Xenoblade 1 Definitive, Definitive Edition. Like, double the Definitive. Twice the Riki. Now Melia has four wings. You get to watch Fiora die twice. Shulk Duel wields Monados. Ryan beats Zanza by hitting the Yoinky Sploinky and it's cutscene. Shala and Zeke swap games. But yeah, I wouldn't say that the art book, at least from the information that I've seen on Twitter, has revealed a ton of new lore, because a lot of it could have been kind of theorized or, you know, just chalked up to context in the actual games if you're really digging into it and paying attention like I was, because I, you know, I love this franchise, like, borderline too much. So I wouldn't say it's like, oh my god, new revelations everywhere. Not really, right? I would say Goldo not being Galea, cool. Is it Galea or Maineth, by the way? I always mess those two up. No, it's Galea in the real world, in like the original world, and it's Maineth in Xenoblade 1. That's the thing. Right, 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 right. Okay, I digress. The Goldo's not Galea. That's a big reveal. The, that was a massively popular theory that got debunked. I kind of am thankful for that because I, I always thought it was kind of dumb. Uh, Lucky 7 being Fiora specifically, I always imagined it because of Xenoblade 3 Future Redeemed that it was some combination of the original cast of 7 from Xenoblade 1. Turns out it was just Fiora. I prefer that, honestly, because it makes more sense and gives Fiora a more prominent singular role in Xenoblade 3. I really like that. Malos is going to get covered again in the future. Thank God. That's my boy right there. That's my boy. Give me Metsu Blade, you cowards. Xenoblade 2 Definitive Edition. No, I will have... No leeway here. Xenoblade 2 Definitive Edition. You beat the game and then it's revealed you get an optional New Game Plus playthrough that's Metsu Blade where Numa and Logos swap places. I want my bro adventure between Rex and Malos going about the world using dark swords and dark energies and dark magics and dark Monado arts. I want all of that. I need it. This is not a want. This is a need. Let me be clear. This is a need. A primal instinctual need like how humans need water or food love companionship or us xenoblade fans grass one of the two i need it yeah worse than spongebob needs water in sandy cheeks's dome yeah i need it he's already playable in xenoblade 2 i'm just saying i'm just saying he is remember the intro give it to me and i'm almost certain that i've made a theory before and I think I may have just talked about this on stream as a throwaway theory, but I'm saying I'm saying this before. I don't even know if I would want this, by the way, just as a prelude to this. What if the protagonist of Xenoblade 4 is a reincarnated Logos or Malos who has to contend with the demons of his past, try to undo or at least rectify some of the damage he's done before, and be the protag or significant character in Xenoblade 4? Yeah, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Where does it lead? to me yeah back to me that or the protag of xenoblade 4 is gonna be mithras kid uh, i kind of lean towards that way more but no i lean towards a new cast way more but either mithras kid or malos or whoever probably could be a significant character in xenoblade 4 i wouldn't be too surprised i mean oh but malos died in xenoblade 2 yeah remember when he took significant damage because of torna and he just like repaired himself by like control copy control paste from numa's core crystal like they have ways to go about this and let me be clear I don't care if they have a pu if they have to pull and suddenly Palpatine returned. I like Logos, okay? I like Malos. Let me have this. Yeah? Let me have this. Don't try and take this away from me. Let me live in my delusion if this is what it is. But let me live in it. Let me live in my Ionios. My endless now. God, the future has so much potential. I'm excited. Future awaits, people. The future awaits. I'm so excited. This series could go so many different directions. I'm here for any of it. Just let them cook. Let me experience it. I want it. I need it. I'm down for it. So with that, I'll call the video there for the day. Thank you all for tuning in. My pleasure in the video and this, well, 
almost did my stream outro there. I got brain rot. By the way, I'm still calling my shot that Xenoblade 4 is all about how at the end of Xenoblade 3, the two worlds didn't rejoin fully. It was an interlink. And then in Xenoblade 4, we have to undo, we have to fix it before they separate again. I'm saying Xenoblade 4 is going to be the inverse of 3, where instead of like trying to get the world to separate again to go their own separate ways, like a journey song, it's going to be about preventing the interlink from ending. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, it makes thematic sense. It works going out of 3. Oh, I'm so in for this. Let me in. Thank you all for tuning in. My pleasure for making the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and helps more future content. And I greatly appreciate it. Stay safe. Have a great day. Go play some video games if you can. And as always, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Until we meet again.